So there are two things that I'd like to interject into this discourse mm -hmm. right quick, if I yeah. may. Sure, sure. Here's the first one. <clears throat> and, and this is relatable to the other artists that we're covering, which is Outkast. Mm -hmm. So Sweet Home Alabama is getting made in 1974, released in 1974, okay? Right. This is one of those things that's troubling within the souls of black folks. On Outkast's first album, Southern Playlist of Cadillac Music, it got released April April 30th, 1994. Mm -hmm. Or April 29th, April 28th, 1994. Literally came out a week after Illmatic. Mm -hmm. Or 419, well, 419 and 427. Yeah, Illmatic's 419. And um, Southern Playlistic is 427. Th those albums got released a week apart. That'll never happen in hip-hop again. Um, <clears throat> never. No. Never be two albums released that good back-to-back -back weeks ever again. Um, the interlude, which is funny, we're covering the second single off the second album, but on the second single off the first album, there's it's called Southern Playlistic Cadillac Music. The name of the second single is actually the name of the album, Southern Playlistic Cadillac Music. But before Southern Playlistic Cadillac Music comes on, there's an interlude called Welcome to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they highlight on the Welcome to Atlanta interlude in 1994 is how the Capitol building was still flying the Confederate battle flag. Right. It highlights that. Mm -hmm. It's highlighting that because it's still touchy. Yeah. 74, 84, 94. So, <clears throat> first of all, I'm not going to castigate Leonard Center totally for these beliefs in 1974. Mm. And I'm going to explain to you why, which is part two. And you and I have had this discourse before in the neighborhood and the community that I lived in that I am raising my daughter in is predominantly white and affluent. I do not come from those types of circumstances and background. And I did not want my daughter, quite frankly, growing up in the same circumstances and background that I did, because mm -hmm. environmentally, I know system I know environmentally and systemically what impoverished situations do. Now, when I drive 20 minutes to work in, Drew, I literally go from this affluent neighborhood to arguably the most affluent neighborhood in this entire state to work. You name it, lives up there. If there are famous black people, mm -hmm. about 30 to 50% of them live in this area too. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So this isn't just an affluent area for the whites anymore that I'm moving into. It's like, how about this? <clears throat> Andre 3000, when I worked in the same place 10 years ago, used to regularly come in with his business manager because his business manager lived in the area. You know? Okay. Yeah. Well, this ain't no broke motherfucker type of place. All right. The back road that I take, and literally, and I know that they're wealthy because they own land in this area. There's a family, Andrew that literally owns a stretch of land in East Cobb. You can see their horses and their cows and their fields. Now, between the trees they've had strategically put up and between their fences, you can't see onto their land, but it stretches and it's wide. And this is a very residential area. So not a lot of people have land like this. In the 14 years that I've been in this area, I haven't seen one piece of property with more land than that stretch that I pass on theirs. Mm -hmm. And when you pass their house, their gate, is always open, Andrew. And guess what you see every time the gate is open, hanging from the front of their house. Yeah. And I've said this to white people in the community who I've befriended and am friends with. Well, my issue isn't that they're waving the fucking flag. My issue is that all of you who pass by it every day, like I do, don't say anything about it or do anything about it. And that's the problem with records like this being ascended into radio, mm -hmm. into TV, into mainstream life is, is that people know that it's wrong, but you're literally being bullied in your own community. Right. And forcing us to deal with it. The people who live in the community need to do the right thing and not because my black ass drives by it every day. They need to right. do it because they know that it's wrong. And I want you to understand this is a neighborhood where I see people walk past, walk their dogs, walk their children, walk their families mm -hmm. past this fucking estate every fucking day. Mm -hmm. 
people need to understand these are the things that we deal with and this is why it's really really an issue so i'm just giving you a contextualization of it of how black people feel about it and use it and how i actually have to deal with it every day and i'm going to have to deal with it every day when i go to work when we get done doing this show i'm going to pass the same house that i'm talking about if i have time today i'll stop and try to take a picture for you okay because it's in a state like you could literally pull up to the front of their gate and there's so much space and so much land even on the driveway that I've, I don't I've want to be like it's a plantation house, but it's that's what it sounds like you're describing. Like the front, the front house looks like an old farmhouse. Yeah. And when I mean they have neighbors, they have a whole community right across the street from them, full neighborhood, school bus, kids pull up, whole stretch of nice houses right next to the whole estate. Mm. Nobody says a word. Mm hmm. So these are the things that I, when we talk about it being indoctrinated into society, mm -hmm. that's the insult. These are the issues with a song like this, per se, like the reality of the song. It's mm -hmm. the allowance of it. It's not that you made the record. It's like, oh, you allow that to happen? Like, look at it like this. When Kanye do some dumb shit, you see how we jump on him, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. You see how black people jump on Kanye? Oh, yeah. They're all up. Mm, yeah. They'll stick their foot up his ass and proverbially leave it there. There's some people with their shoestrings still up Kanye's ass about some things that he said some years ago. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so what what my community typically looks for in the situation is what we give out. You know, I um I texted somebody who's part of the um, you know, it's pride uh down here. Right. And I actually texted somebody that I was having a discourse with that's part of the trans queer community okay mm -hmm. yeah and i was like hey because they were talking about the hierarchy of oppression and how they're at the bottom which i would agree with for the most part mm -hmm. but what i was submitting to them is is that i said hey i said did you ever think or do you ever think that this city will let straight black men congregate down here every year and literally take over this entire city the way they allow your community to. I said, do you think they trust black men enough to do that? These are the dynamics and the issues that we're really dealing with. You know what I mean? Now you start throwing a flag up into this shit when slavery been over. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like there's other things going on, even within my own community that we are discoursing about. And so we shouldn't, you shouldn't have to bear this burden is really what I'm saying. Right. And so it's you really should. not too right. much. It's not too much to ask to be like, Hey, Take care, take care of your own the way we take care of ours. Like white people don't shut black people up. Black people shut black people up. <laughs> I ain't never seen a white person make a black man be quiet that he couldn't arrest. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. Or murder. You feel me? So it's like audit your own circumstances and situation is kind of like the thing over here, I think.